I'm going to start a an area light. Now I use these all the time um, and basically think of area lights the same way that you think of lights for, let's say, film setups or a three-point lighting setup. Um, the point light is going to go everywhere in all the directions. The spotlight has a very specific use case where you can kind of change the um, edge. I'll be honest with you, I don't use spotlights very often. I use area lights though all the time. And let me show you why. So shift A, light, and area. Now it makes this um, square. Can't see anything because it's got a directionality to it. So I'm going to hit G and Z and pull it straight on up. And right now, I've just got this square, right? And I want to actually change some parameters to it. I'm going to stay in cycles for this one to start. So shape, I've got it square. I can switch it to rectangle over here. And now I can choose you know, how big I want this thing. And right now, I'm going to create what's called a soft boom. Uh, no, it might not be called a soft boom, but it's just a soft, big light. So I'm going to say 100. And this allows me to have just like a nice soft light over the whole entire scene. The other reason I like this is I now have this angular thing that I can now start to rotate. So I'm going to do what we've done in other sessions. I want to rotate this on the Y axis. So I'm going to hit R, Y, and then just kind of scoot it over here. And what I want you to pay attention to is where this kind of fall off is. You can control how your lights in your scene work based on that fall off. You still have this uh, ability to kind of grab that orange dot just like we did before. So I'm hit RY. And you just kind of see how that fall off hits on both sides. Um, we also see that we have a spread option. So I can have this kind of think of this like barn doors, if you will. Um, and so with that spread option at zero, it acts a little bit like a um, like a spotlight, but I tend to leave that spread at 180, so it just acts like a normal kind of floodlight. Um, there is, let's see, we can change the power to 1,000, and this is the first time where I'm going to change the color a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and push this one towards the warm. Uh, it's not towards the warm, that was warm. Alright, something like this. It's a little warmer. And I'm going to look down the top of this. So I'm going to hit Z. And now I'm looking down the top of my, my whole screen. And what I want to do is I want to have two different sides here. So I'm going to grab this and move it. And then I'm going to duplicate it. Have a think. How did we duplicate these objects? If you don't recall, it's just simply Command, or I'm sorry, Shift D as in Delta. I'm going to move this over here. And this one I want to be a little cooler, so I'm going to push it towards the cold. Now the reason why I'm doing this is now I have a warm side and a cool side to my objects. I'm going to go ahead and just grab this little orb and put it on that sphere, and grab this little orb and put it on that sphere. And now, in, a, in my scene, without really trying too very hard, I've set up a nice little lighting environment. Cool. Well, let's take a peek at what that looks like in Eevee. So I'm going to switch over here to from Cycles to Eevee. And we can see that hot and cold scene here digitally calculated. And one thing I want you to notice is when you have multiple lights, notice what happens to your shadows when you move. It has to basically recalculate what they look like. And I think that that ghosting is kind of fun. Anyway, so that is one of the ways to set up lights inside Blender. Um, I tend to use these quite a bit.